We are handing over the keys to our world, to algorithms that diagnose our health, manage our finances, and navigate our streets. We are placing an extraordinary amount of trust in a technology that most of us perceive as an inscrutable black box. Inside this box are billions of connections, a digital brain so complex that even its creators cannot trace the exact path of its logic. It learns, it adapts, it decides. But how does it know? How can we be sure it's right? This is the great paradox of the 21st century. We are building our future on systems we don't fully understand, taking a leap of faith that the machine knows what it's doing. But what if I told you that isn't true? What if the trust we place in AI isn't the leap of faith at all? What if, hidden beneath the layers of code and complexity, there is a foundation of absolute certainty, a series of profound mathematical proofs that form the invisible backbone of all artificial intelligence? To find that backbone, we have to go back to the 1920s, to a time before computers, when mathematicians dreamed of a perfect system, a system of logic so complete and so consistent that it could, in principle, prove every single true statement about numbers. This was the ultimate vision of a perfect machine for thought. But in 1931, a quiet, brilliant logician from Vienna named Kurt Gödel published a paper that sent a shockwave through the world of mathematics. He proved that this dream of a perfect, all-knowing system was impossible. Gödel's genius was to use mathematics to talk about itself. He created a statement that, when translated from the language of logic, essentially said, this statement is unprovable. Think about that. If the statement is true, then it's an example of a true statement that the system cannot prove. But if the statement is false, it means it is provable, which leads to a contradiction. This led to Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. Any formal system powerful enough to do basic arithmetic will always contain true statements that it cannot prove. It will always be incomplete. His second theorem was even more profound. Such a system can never prove its own consistency. This isn't just an abstract puzzle. It has a direct and unbreakable consequence for computers, formalized in what we call the halting problem. It is provably impossible to create a general algorithm that can look at any computer program and determine whether it will eventually stop or run forever in an infinite loop. There are fundamental questions that no computer, no matter how powerful, can ever answer. So, Gödel's proof seems like a roadblock. It tells us that we can never build a perfect, all-knowing, logical machine. But in reality, it was the opposite. By proving the absolute limits of pure, deterministic logic, it forced us to look for a different kind of intelligence, one that wasn't built on a foundation of perfect certainty, but on something else entirely. Gödel proved you can't pre-program a machine with a complete set of rules for the universe. So, what if it could learn the rules from experience? This seems like an even harder problem. How can we trust a system that learns from a tiny, finite sample of an infinitely complex world? The answer came in 1984, from a computer scientist named Leslie Valiant. He didn't try to prove that a machine could learn to be perfect. Instead, he created a framework to prove that it could be probably, approximately correct. The genius is right there in the name. It's not a guarantee of perfection, but a mathematical guarantee on imperfection. The theory is called PAC learning, and at its heart is a way to measure the complexity or power of a learning model. This measure is called the vapnik chervenenkis or VC, dimension. Imagine you have a set of data points. A model's VC dimension is the maximum number of points it can shatter. Shattering means that for any possible way you label those points, say red or blue, the model can draw a boundary that perfectly separates them. A simple linear model, a straight line, can shatter any three points in a plane, but you can always arrange four points in a way that a single line can't separate them. So its VC dimension is three. A more complex model, like a circle, has a higher VC dimension. It's a precise mathematical way of saying how flexible a model is, and this is where the proof comes in. PAC learning gives us a formula, a generalization bound that connects everything. It says that the error a model will make on new, unseen data is less than or equal to the error it made on the training data, plus a penalty term that depends on the model's complexity, its VC dimension. This is profound. It's a mathematical trade-off. A more complex model might do better on the training data, but it pays a higher complexity penalty, making it more likely to fail on new data. This is the mathematical definition of overfitting. Most importantly, the proof tells us exactly how much data we need to collect to be confident with high probability that our approximately correct model is good enough to trust. Without this proof, machine learning would be alchemy. We'd see that it works, but we wouldn't know why. Pack learning is the foundational charter that gives us the mathematical confidence to build learning systems at all. It is the proof that learning is not magic, it is possible. 
So, we have a mathematical proof that learning is possible. The PAC framework guarantees that a good model exists somewhere in the vast space of all possible models. But for a modern neural network, that space can have billions or even trillions of parameters. How do we practically find that model? The answer is an algorithm that forms the engine of nearly all modern deep learning, gradient descent. The idea is beautifully simple. Imagine you're lost on a vast, foggy mountain, and your goal is to get to the lowest point in the valley. You can't see the whole landscape, but you can feel the slope of the ground right where you're standing. The most obvious strategy is to take a step in the direction of the steepest descent, straight downhill. You repeat this process, step after step, and eventually, you should reach the bottom. In machine learning, the landscape is the loss function, a measure of how wrong the model's predictions are. The lowest point is the set of parameters that makes the model most accurate, and the slope is the mathematical gradient. Gradient descent is simply the algorithm of taking repeated, small steps downhill to find the best model. But again, how do we know this actually works? How can we be sure the algorithm doesn't get stuck on a ledge, or go in circles, or overshoot the valley entirely? We need another proof, a proof of convergence. Mathematicians have proven that under certain reasonable conditions, gradient descent is guaranteed to work. The two most important are that the function is relatively smooth, meaning the slope doesn't change too abruptly, a property called L-smoothness and, in the simplest case, that it's convex, meaning it's a simple bowl shape with only one global minimum. We now have a system built on a proof of possibility and trained with a proven mechanism. It's probably, approximately, correct. But now, it's controlling a car, or assisting in surgery. Probably correct is no longer good enough. We need a higher standard of proof. We need to know that it will never be catastrophically wrong. This brings us to the cutting edge of AI trust, formal verification. This is a field that takes the absolute rigor of mathematical proof and applies it directly to a trained neural network. The goal is to prove, with logical certainty, that for a specific range of inputs, the AI's output will always stay within a predefined safe boundary. For example, we can state a safety property for a self-driving car. If the front sensor detects an obstacle anywhere between 1 and 2 meters away, prove that the network's output for brake pressure is always greater than 50%. Verification tools then go to work. Using techniques like reachability analysis, they calculate the entire set of all possible outputs the network could produce for that entire range of inputs. They don't just test a few points, they analyze the infinite space of possibilities. If that entire reachable set of outputs falls within the safe zone, in this case above 50% brake pressure, the property is formally proven. The verifier returns SAT for satisfied. If it finds even one possible input that could lead to an unsafe output, it returns a counterexample. This is the ultimate marriage of our two worlds. We use a probabilistic, learning-based system, the neural network, to handle the messy complexity of the real world, but we wrap it in a safety cage built from the deterministic, absolute certainty of mathematical proof. We are not making the AI a perfect logical machine. Godel told us that's impossible. Instead, we are using logic to prove that its behavior, however complex, will never escape the bounds of what we define as safe. This is the highest level of trust we can currently build for AI. So the black box isn't a black box at all. It's a stack of proofs. Gerdell's proof of limits, which defined the field of play. Pack Learning's proof of possibility, which gave us the confidence to learn from data. Gradient Descent's proof of process, which gave us a practical way to train our models. And Formal Verification's proof of safety, which gives us the confidence to deploy them. But the story doesn't end there. In a final, beautiful twist, the very tool we have been trying to understand is now helping us expand the foundations it was built on. This is Lean, a new kind of programming language called a proof assistant. Mathematicians use it to write proofs that are so rigorously detailed that a computer can check them for correctness, line by line. It turns abstract logical arguments into concrete, verifiable objects. Formalizing a cutting-edge proof in a system like Lean can take years of effort by human experts. And now, researchers are training large language models to become expert mathematicians' assistants. These AIs can suggest tactics, find relevant theorems from vast libraries, and even help generate new proofs inside these formal systems. The very backbone of mathematics is being strengthened by the intelligence it helped create. The story of AI and proof began with a human proving the limits of machines. It ends, for now, with machines helping humans expand the limits of knowledge itself. The hidden backbone isn't just a foundation. It's a living, growing collaboration, pointing the way to a future of discovery we are only just beginning to imagine.